welcome to A League Access, Chris Economides. I was a bit nervous Hello. saying that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Excited to be here. Oh, good. Um, I just want to start off by asking you did a little promo for Melbourne Victory a few weeks ago or a week ago, and you talked about the yeah. buzz and going into the stadium and experiencing all the noise. Is that something that you really, one of the things that you're really looking forward to now being with Melbourne Victory, walking into the crowd and walking into the stadium, I should say, and experiencing the, the whole 20,000 yes. members? Yes, I, I can honestly say I'm, I'm genuinely excited. I'm like, a, I'm like a child playing football for the first time. I'm just so keen to have um, fans back and especially these this club with, with the amount of fans and, and kind of loyal supporters that they've always had. Um, I just can't wait. I can't wait to see the Amy Park full and, um, and see everyone back on board and excited. Chris, you're reunited with your former coach from Perth Glory, with Tony Popovich. Uh, yep. how, cru how crucial was he in your decision to leave Perth and to join Melbourne Victory? I think it was a very, very big factor. Um, for me, playing under him, it was probably the best environment I've played in during my whole career. Just the, mm. the kind of the mentality and environment he creates. Um, not only does it get results, but me, I personally enjoy it a lot. I enjoy coming into work every day and, and working hard and being a part of something. And, and I think for me, it was, um, it was the right decision. And um, I'm grateful to be back working together with uh, Popovich. Chris, let's uh, take a step back in time. As a, as a young teenager, you've embarked on the journey as a, as a Sydney teenager trying to live the dream. You've gone over to Italy, yep. played with some top clubs in high pressure environments. Tell us about that experience as a, as, as a young boy, you know, trying to fulfill the dream. Yeah. Um, moving overseas at just turning 16 and, and having to drop out of school and, and leave all my family behind obviously was, was a massive decision, not only for me, but for my family and um, a massive risk as well. I had to give up my education and, and kind of take a plunge because you only really get one or two chances at, at becoming a professional and doing this for a living. And it's kind of what we all want. And, and getting to Italy and, and progressing through the ranks and, and getting into the first team and, and starting to play first team football was as tough a challenge as I could have ever imagined. And I think it really defined my career and, and defined me as a person as well, going through that adversity so, so young, not knowing the language, not knowing anyone there and not kind of having much support um it really set me up to to kind of to progress and it gave me extra kind of fire under my belly just to kind of um to kick on and and now um it really did set the foundation for me as, as a player and also as a, as a young man what was Lazio like the, I mean it's one of Italy's most famous most passionately supported clubs mm. leaving Sydney which is an NRL State yeah. to go to the almost the home of world football. Yeah, incredible. Um, obviously leaving, as you said, Cronulla, Sydney, training twice a week, and then going into this environment of utter professionalism and and absolute chaotic fan bases that they've got there, and and being a young player just signing into the team already, people recognizing you on the street and stopping you and inviting you to restaurants to eat for free and all this kind of <laughs> data that you get passed upon you, it just makes you really understand how big football is, not only in Italy, but in the whole world. And, um, you know, to, to have had that experience, to have played and learned from players like Miroslav Kloza and Felipe Anderson, and I can list all of them. Um, for me, was priceless at the time, and I just absorbed it all like a sponge. You came then back, as we know, then you played in Perth, and, and now back Melbourne Victory, and as you said, the biggest club in uh, Australia. Unfortunately, they didn't have the last two good seasons, yeah. right? So, um, in particular, last season finished last. That um, is definitely far. Um, below the expectations with Melbourne victory. Yeah. Now they signed you, they signed Tony Popovich and also two of your former uh, teammates in, in Perth, right? So uh, Jason Davison and uh, Matthew Spiranovic. 
what do you feel in terms of pressure now for that team and the expectations? Or is it in other ways a big optimism now to really get it up and running and bring Melbourne Victory yeah. back where they were? Yeah, I think you said it well. A team like Melbourne Victory always has pressure on them because they should be finishing in the top two or three maximum positions on the table. And and I, I like that pressure. That's the kind of pressure you, you feel playing a relegation battle in, in Europe. Or, or, for example, and definitely results weren't good for the last two seasons here. Um, it's still a massive club. Everything off the pitch works well. It's just on the pitch. They they just didn't um, get the results they wanted. And I think it's the right time for me personally to join the club and, and for the people who have come in now. I think it's kind of, it's a one direction up the, mm -hmm. the, the club and the team's going in. So I think for me and for everyone who's come in, it's... Um, There's pressure to, to bring the club back to where they should be, and but also um, a great opportunity as well. We One just need the, the spectators that... back, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> important. It's important to get uh, the victory supporters excited about um, our play and also about the results that we're going to get. One of the things that I noticed last year was, or this last season, was that The, mit the fitness wasn't there with a lot of the players. What's it like at the moment with all the conditioning coaches that have been brought in and the assistant coaches? What's the level of fitness? Is there a high level, higher level of intensity yeah. amongst the, you know, the training? Yeah, of course. This is um, one of probably the best build-ups to a season I've ever had. We've got we've got the time now, and um, we're definitely not wasting the time. We're working extremely hard, but we're working smart as well. So. Um, even though we're a couple of months or however many weeks away from the first game, we're still kind of really getting pushing ourselves to be at the best possible condition we can be in. And I think um, I think it's definitely an edge we're going to have coming into this season is is our physical ability. Yeah, Chris. Speaking of, um, you had that disappointing injury, uh, severe knee injury. How how are now? How are you now holding up? Are you back to full fitness? You made nine appearances last season. So can we expect you to see out the season and recapture that that fine form and fitness from previous seasons? Yeah, of course. I'm feeling um, feeling fantastic. And, and as I said just before, we've had such a good kind of solid block of training now that we've, we've already done a couple of months and, and we're playing loads of friendly in-house matches within that. So... Um, Yeah, you can definitely expect to see uh, myself and everyone just firing. I think um, the way we've done it this year has been quite intelligent. We haven't, um, they're not pushing players to the brink, but they're pushing everyone to the absolute maximum. And um, it's always tailored for the individual as well. So it's, um, we're in very good hands with the kind of physical preparation here as well. That's great to hear. And we spoke about the expectation for the club, but the expectation in particular on you as a, as a soccer player and, and Melbourne Victory said on their website, you're one of the um, brightest attacking talents in, in Australia and attackers. Do you feel in particular Chris Economides at Melbourne Victory is, is now very special and um, everybody's eyes are on you? Not in particular. I feel I've always kind of had my own expectations for myself no matter where I was playing in my career, whether it be at the Socceroos or, or in Denmark or in Italy where I played. Um, mm -hmm. So that kind of never changes. I always have my own expectations of myself. And within that, I always try and deliver what, what the coach is asking from me and what the, and what the club wants. So if um, people say I've done a good job whilst doing those things, I'm happy. If not, it's um, as long as I tick those kind of boxes and, and do my job in the team, I think everyone's pretty happy. Chris, ironically, your first professional appearance for Melbourne Victory will hopefully come in the, FF, the FFA Cup against your old team where you enjoyed some success, Perth Glory. Any yep. nerves about that? Do you expect any cheeky elbows to the ribs, any, any love taps <laughs> to the, uh, the ankles? Definitely. Uh, I think you can always expect that. But um, it'll, be a, it'll be a good match. It'll be fantastic to, to get underway against them especially. Um, they probably know me well, the way I play, and but equally I'll, I'll understand a lot how their players play, and um, I think it'll be a good matchup. Your tip for the game? Uh, I think Melbourne victory 2-0, <laughs> but uh, I'm not <laughs> sure. We're, we're going to do our best and, uh, and try and win.
So 2 0 with uh, Chris Economides being on the score sheet as well. Yeah, we'll go for that. <laughs> <laughs> so what, we, we what message would you have to the for the supporters at the moment who I think there's some who aren't convinced yet about you and all the rest. Yeah. What would you say to them about, you know, what you're going to bring to this club and what you're going to bring to each and every game? Because we won't see you until, yeah. well, a home game won't be until round two against Brisbane Raw. So, yeah. well, because unless we can get out of this 10 kilometre no-go zone, we won't be getting, yeah. going to Geelong. Sure, sure. No, I think for me personally, you know, I'm so excited to, to get in front of all the Victory fans and, I'll always give my all in every match and um, we're going to try and play a lot of exciting football with a lot of lot of goals and, and nice combinations up front. But, um, you know, we're, we've been working hard for the last two months. We've been working extremely hard so that we can deliver results and, and we can excite the crowd and, and get everyone back supporting victory that we, the way we know they should. We have briefly mentioned you are a soccer roo, so um, definitely proud to play for the national team. But there was some discussion now with the soccer roos with the World Cup qualifier. So Ryan Grant was the only A-League player that is now with the soccer roos, then stays in Europe to avoid the quarantine, yeah. then comes back and plays for the soccer roos, and then finally does the makes the return to Australia. There was uh, some story behind that you might do the same but then the club in the end made the decision no we want you back is that correct i think it was um in the end we were considering it but it was just uh it wasn't that they didn't want me to go it was just that i'd only trained for one week after getting out of quarantine and we just thought it wasn't quite the best for me to be playing these international games just after one week of training mm -hmm. and about two months of of holidays and different quarantines that i had to do coming back from the last Socceroos camp. But um, yeah, I'm feeling much, much better now. And um, if there was a chance for me in the future, then I, I think I'd definitely uh, be keen to get involved again. What do you expect from the upcoming games now against Japan and Oman? I think they're going to be tough, in particular Japan, as it always is. But, you know, we've had a fantastic record. Um, I think mm -hmm. we've broken the record for the amount of wins in a row. And if we, if we can manage to do what we've been doing and, and get another two victories, I think we're very, very, uh, very close to um, our goal, which is to qualify for the World Cup. Fingers crossed. Absolutely, Chris. And obviously, yeah. you'll be eyeing off an opportunity to be in the squad. Congratulations on making those appearances this year in the qualifying phase. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to think that you'll be very much in the frame for selection again. Yeah. You know, um, us players... All we can really do is, is do our best at club level and um, when we get into these camps, do well and, and the rest is uh, up, to, up to the higher up people. But I guess um, for me to play for Australia, it's always the, it's the biggest honour in football, really. And um, it's not even about um, the press. It's not about the prestige. It's just about the, you know, you're putting on your, your, your home jersey. It's Australia and you're lucky enough to play for them. So every time you get the chance, you just you give everything you've got. You just signed with Melbourne Victory, so maybe a bit too early to ask, but is in the back of your mind of Chris Economides still a little bit of a thought, maybe going back to Europe at one stage, um, give it a, a second go? For me, you know, obviously you said it's early to speak about it. At the moment, I'm 100% just kind of thinking of course, about Victory. Yeah. I've signed three years, but for me, anything's a possibility. I, I consider every kind of option and I talk through it with my agent and, and stuff like that but um for now for me I'm super excited to be back working with um with Popovich and back playing with these players that I've played with before and um at such a such a good club in a, in a good city it's exciting for me. Chris I won't get you to give away any tactics or uh formations or anything like that but what can we expect from a Tony Popovich coached Melbourne victory with obviously yourself at the forefront and the yeah. additions of those wonderful players from, from Perth, Speranovic, Jason Geria, who's a fan favourite at Melbourne Victory, having played yeah. there for several years. So what can we expect? I think you can expect that we're going to be fighting for all 90 minutes. I think that's really the, the kind of the Popovich way is that we don't give teams much. We won't give them an inch. And 
out of that will always come our natural ability, our individuality will come out and we've got bucket loads of that in this team. So um, for us, it's to be tight, solid defensively and every single player will be working their ass off. Sorry, every single yeah, player will be working <laughs> extremely hard. Um, but then on top of that, you'll see the individual brilliance, which will excite the fans with goals and dribbling and, and good team play as well. So I think yes, um, there's a good season to come. And just finally, um, Chris, I wanted to ask, are you expecting a chant from the North End this, this year, like a nice one? Because I imagine they've got some horrible ones from when you were at Perth Glory. So yeah. are you hoping that they'll come to the party with a good one or should we put the challenge out to them? To You can put the challenge out, but I'm just happy to, I'm just happy for the fans to be in the stadium and, and to be cheering all of us on. That's for us as footballers, when um, kind of COVID took away our fans, that took away a big, big part of the, of the game that we all love and we all dreamt of playing in front of fans. So to have them back would be unbelievable. And if they sang a song, that'd be even better. <laughs> well, Chris Economides, I just want to say thank you for joining us on A-League Access tonight. And um, it's been a real pleasure and I wish you every success at Melbourne Victory this season. And we can only look forward to the team going up, not down this year. Yes, of course. Thank you very much for having me, guys. It was a pleasure to be on. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. We wish you all Thank the best. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye-bye.